class, recall when we looked at a molecule like this versus this one. And we're like, hey, here's a single bond and here's a single bond. But the distance between those uh, carbons are different. So if you remember, if we come back here to that side right there. And we used <clears throat> hybridization and the hybridization states of atoms to explain why there was a difference in bond length. Well, we come back here. We're going to use MO theory, which stands for molecular orbital theory, to explain why there is a difference in bond length as well. So we're just getting a, a different viewpoint. Now, molecular orbital theory, you were introduced to it in general chemistry. You talked about it in organic chemistry one. But it is one of those abstract concepts that it never hurts to do a little refresher. So what we have here is the molecule ethene. Right. <clears throat> now in MO theory, what we're going to do is how many atomic orbitals are present in a molecule. You can take those atomic orbitals and those atomic orbitals are described by the Schrodinger equation, so just mathematics. And we can combine those atomic orbitals into a molecular orbitals, and that's just a mathematical uh, process. And so what we are looking at right here, okay, we are only focusing our attention on the p orbitals. So if we take a look at ethylene here, we have some p orbitals right there. Okay. And they have phases. Okay. So those are our atomic orbitals. In our diagram or this picture right here, we are looking at those p orbitals. So this one right here could be represented right here. Right. And then this one right here can be represented over here. Right. Now when we take those, and those are atomic orbitals. So when we take these atomic orbitals, and do a mathematical operation to combine them, we get two molecular orbitals. Two in, two out. So we have our pi bonding MO and our anti bonding MO. And these are both, these MOs are for the ethylene molecule. And then the electrons that reside in those atomic orbitals are going to go to the lowest energy MO. So we see in ethylene, the two pi electrons go into this pi bonding MO. Now what's interesting about MO theory is it's showing us that these atomic orbitals now look like a molecular orbital, and you can see that the molecular orbital encompasses the entire molecule. It's not separated out like I drew right here. You see up here? I drew the molecule, but I drew the p orbitals separate. But a molecular orbital encompasses the whole molecule. That's one key difference. We also have the antibonding molecular orbital. And in the antibonding orbital, you can see that the, there is one node. So if there's a node between those two carbon atoms, no bonding, right? <clears throat> no electron density be, between those two carbons.
So now what we are going to look at is butadiene. Okay. And butadiene is four carbons. That so looks like that. So each one of those carbons has p orbitals. And I'm not so we have p orbitals all throughout here. And we'll draw in the phases. Okay. So those are the atomic orbitals in butadiene. And those four atomic orbitals are represented right there. So four atomic orbitals, when we turn them into molecular orbitals, we get four molecular orbitals out. Okay. And you can see that the lowest energy one, the lowest energy MO, does not have any nodes. The pi electrons cover the entire molecule. But as you increase in energy, you are increasing the amount of nodes. Okay. Now the reason why we have two images, both this image and this image right here, are both describing butadiene. What we, what I want you to understand is this is what the MOs actually look like. Okay. But it's kind of hard to talk about them as an MO. So we draw it differently over here. So over here, it kind of looks like separate and distinct atomic orbitals. But we're just saying this is that. We're just drawing it in such a way that we can see the orbitals, the, where, where all the pieces came from. Okay. So if you take these four, or these four actually, it will look like this. But to help us keep track of things a little bit better, and for just for visual effects, we say those are, are as well MOs. They're just a little bit different. Okay. <clears throat> so the, both, are both are MOs. Okay, that's the moral of the story. Now the pi electrons, the four pi electrons in butadiene, and we see that there's four pi electrons because we have two in that double bond and two in that double bond. Do we see where the electrons go? They go in the, the two lowest MOs. <clears throat> now this is interesting here. This is really cool here. We're going to focus our attention on carbon two and carbon three. Okay. Now in carbon two and three, if I drew the structure of butadiene, there it is. There's carbon two and there's carbon three. When we look at the structure that I drew, the skeletal structure, it looks like a single bond. But when you look at the MO, so this is represented carbon 2 and carbon 3. Do you see in between the two carbons there, there's overlap of electron density. So that's showing us some partial double bond character. And if there's partial double bond character between carbons two and three, then that means there's it's the bond is going to be shorter. And we could represent that like this. If we drew a resonance structure of butadiene, resonance structures can also show us some double bond character here. Look at that. Carbons two and carbons three. There's some double bond character there. So resonance even helps us to understand why carbon two and carbon three bond length should be shorter. Okay.
And then in this MO right here, okay, what's going on here? That MO kind of describes single bond character shown in there. See how that single bond? Or if we go back to the resonance structure, the single bond character. I think that's so cool that MO theory is helping us to understand what the molecule actually looks like. So butadiene is telling us that this bond from carbon 2 and carbon 3 has single bond character and double bond character. Hence, that's why the bond lengths between those two carbons is going to be shorter than what we would expect from just a alkane like that. So 135 hexatriene. What does that molecule look like? Well, we break it apart. Hexa means six. Tri means three. Three what? Three alkenes. So it looks like this. Two, three, four, five, six. That's 135 hexatriene right there. Now when we look at that, we can see that there are going to be six p orbitals. That is what's being represented right there. And then those six p orbitals, which are atomic orbitals, are combined mathematically to give us six molecular orbitals. Things to notice, as you increase in energy, you increase in the amount of nodes. Okay. The lowest energy state right here, we can see that the electrons are delocalized across the entire molecule. Nice and conjugated. Okay. And that is very, very stable. Now when we look at uh, the triene molecule, look at their MOs here. Reactions occur between two orbitals, the HOMO and the LUMO. HOMO stands for the highest occupied molecular orbital. So when you look at all these six molecular orbitals, you can see that this orbital has electrons and this one does not. So the HOMO is the molecular orbital that is the highest in energy that has electrons in it. And the LUMO is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. And these two molecular orbitals are the most important because that's where all the chemistry occurs when you do a chemical reaction. It is simply the interaction between the HOMO of one molecule and the LUMO of a second molecule and how those two molecular orbitals interact with one another. And that is how a reaction occurs. So if we study those two uh, orbitals in, with a lot of uh, intensity, we can understand reactions. And that study is called frontier. Those two orbitals, the HOMO and the LUMO, are called frontier orbitals. And so there's a theory called frontier orbital theory that we use to help explain uh, chemical reactivity. So what's interesting is that a lot of molecules that have color, like carrots and fruits, vegetables, anything that has color, the odds are the molecules in those objects are conjugated compounds. So, okay. Well, that's a horrible, I better just stop drawing. So we have conjugation in colored molecules. And what gives them color is when light, okay, 
is shown onto the molecule and then it takes one of the electrons in the HOMO and excites it to the LUMO. So that's what you see here. That one electron goes to an excited state. And then when that excited state electron there relaxes back down, what is emitted? A photon of light. And that's what our eyes detect. Okay. So next, what we're going to start doing now is start looking at reactions.